Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. And welcome to the channel that gives you wine education centering around the WSET courses. So we are here to supply you with informative videos that will help you study the WSET certificates to give you the confidence to pass your exams. And welcome here to a, a diploma video. This is the WSET level four diploma video on wine production the section on general wine making options, specifically looking here at grape reception, sorting and chilling. And in fact, this first, or oh, sorry, this part, this series is just two parts only. So this video looking at sorting and chilling, and then part two looking at the world of de-stemming and crushing. Part two will only be available on my e-learning portal. That's at www.winewithjimmy.com, where you find a wonderful wealth of information there on the e-learning portal to help you with your studies, including things like flashcards, short written answer questions, multiple choice questions, revision sessions, and of course, lots and lots of exclusive video content. Um, as always, if you do have any comments or questions or concerns, you can get in touch with me here at Wine with Jimmy by commenting on this video on YouTube or by getting in touch by the social media that you see at the bottom of every slide. And thank you so much for all of the wonderfully warm and friendly comments that you send me on a daily basis from across the world. So let's start to begin here looking at grape reception on sorting and chilling. So on arrival at the winery, a number of options are of course presented to the winemaker and will depend on the volume of the grapes, whether they have been hand harvested or machine harvested, and of course very importantly, the health of the grapes. Where large scale volume of grapes are to be moved into the winery, they will be moved on a reception type of conveyor belt or a screw conveyor. Uh, and the former one, which is this conveyor belt is generally a little bit more gentler, whereas the screw version is a little bit more uh, a little bit more aggressive so often the belt version of the conveyor is uh, considered better for higher quality wine smaller volumes of hand harvested grapes often for small artisanal batch productions can be moved around manually of course often with things like a fork lift truck or a pallet truck if that is available. Uh, the grapes are then conveyed either into the sorting phase uh, or to the destemmer and crusher, of course, which we will cover on part two. So let's start talking around chilling and then we'll get to sorting. Chilling is something I like to do, certainly with a glass of wine, but we're talking about a different type of chilling here very much centered around the temperature of the wine. So if the grapes are at a warm condition when they are coming into the winery, so for example, being picked kind of like in this picture in warm conditions, often sunny, warm afternoons, then the winemaker, he or she may choose to chill them at a lower temperature before crushing and pressing begins. Warm temperatures, of course, the reason why we do this is because warm temperatures may actually supply some problems for the winemaker, such as an increased rate of oxidation uh, and also uh, an increased problematic rate of microbiological spoilage, uh, so with bacteria, for example. So, bringing the temperature down is, is avoiding, is giving a chance to avoid these issues, but also helping to maintain a kind of centered fruity freshness to the wine as well. Methods of chilling. 
So chilling of whole bunches usually takes place in something we call a refrigeration unit pictured there. The chilling takes time, which may, of course, slow the whole process down for grape processing. Um, but it can be uh, a useful place to store grapes um, if all the sorting tables, for example, presses and also the other equipment are in use. And this is actually very important with wineries that are bringing in numerous grapes from different sites, certainly like in Burgundy, for instance, where you've got grapes coming in at different picking dates, you may find that there might be an influx, an increased amount at a certain time due to the climatic conditions. And that means that some grapes will need to be stored before being fully processed. And this is where refrigeration units come in exceptionally usefully. Um, we can also utilize heat exchangers as well. They can be used for chilling. And they can also be used for heating in colder climates. Uh, but uh, that's often utilized if the grapes potentially are in more of a fluid format. So for example, grapes that have been picked by machine or that they've already been destemmed or potentially even crushed, we can use heat exchangers. They are very effective and they work very quickly. But of course, both refrigeration units and heat exchangers incur cost. And that's because of the skilled labor you need to operate them. You will also need the storage capabilities, the initial cost of the refrigeration units or the heat exchangers, and of course, the continued use of energy to keep them at, of course, the desired temperature. Um, but of course, we can think a bit more proactively about bringing the grapes in, in, in colder conditions. And that links to really harvesting at night or early in the morning. That will be the way to really sort of encourage grape picking in warmer climates. So they avoid the costs of having to sort of bring the temperature down. They are trying to bring the grapes in at colder temperatures. So moving on from chilling and into the world of sorting. So there are really um, a number of things we can talk about here. Um, the level of grape sorting, or in French, triage, as you'll see up there at the top of the screen. Uh, the, the level of this, the level of triage uh, it, that is required will indeed rely on whether sorting takes place out at all, because it may not need to, or a number of other factors which are all listed here as well. So, Sorting may or may not happen. If it does happen, uh, then these are four main considerations on why it may happen and the level of it as well. So really around the ripeness and the health of the fruit, certainly the ripeness is important stylistically wise. The health of the fruit is, is very important in terms of the problems that unhealthy fruit can cause. Uh, certainly when you look at ripeness as well, you've got certain varieties which have very uneven levels of ripening from berry berry to, uh, to bunch to bunch. Things like Zinfandel, for instance, in the US tends to have very differing levels of ripeness. And of course, sorting may need to be employed to maintain a quality control because you may have underripe fruit, ripe fruit and overripe fruit, raisined fruit. So sorting in that instance, of course, is very much important. Then you've got the intended final wine and the price. So the final wine quality and the price. Uh, and of course, real fundamental is that we sort really to maintain that wine's quality. Uh, whether any sorting has been carried out in the vineyard by skilled labor forces will mean that we may need to, of course, uh, either not, if, if it has been done, we might need to not need to do so much in the winery, or uh, it may not have been done, of course. And then, of course, the physical state of the grapes. So if grapes are um, arriving in very large containers, of course, you're going to find pressure at the bottom of that container, which will have caused some of those grapes to already burst because they've been crushed under that pressure 
and that will mean that there will need to be sorting. Certainly, uh, this is an issue for, of course, premature fermentation. Um, and also linked to vintage variation. And this is actually quite easy to really summarize. Uh, you'll see here on the left hand side, you've got a picture of what looks like quite a healthy vineyard, which is probably about to go through harvest, but we've got very, very auspicious conditions occurring there with cloudy, ominous skies. And in those, that's symbolizing a poorer vintage, we're trying to symbolize here, but a poorer year or, or, a, or a cold climatic year can really increase the need for really lots of uh, sorting. So increasing sorting. Um, and that's usually for most of them, most styles of wine, probably all but the most basic style of wine. And that's to really remove uh, fruit that's been affected by disease pressure, by mold, so fungal affected fruit, and also under ripe grapes, which may happen, of course, in cooler conditions. In very good years, symbolized by this gentleman in his cap harvesting, which looks like in perfect conditions, fruit may arrive to the winery in near perfect condition. And that means, of course, there will be very little requirement here for sorting. Uh, and, uh, you know, things like leaves, twigs, insects and so on, which is called material other than grapes. I'll go on to the next slide because I actually got it. Uh, oh, no, it's, it's in a slide a little bit later, but it's called material other than grapes. Uh, M-O-G it, it is what is uh, it's what is eliminated at that time. OK, so next up then. We've just talked about really vintage variation with it. We talked about uh, um, you know, the reasons behind it. Uh, what about the cost of sorting? Now, the more sorting that is carried out, of course, the higher the cost. And this is both due to the labor requirement, but also the time taken and therefore the increased scrutiny of those grapes because you're going to start to eliminate fruit instead of just letting it all go through you're going to be much more meticulous in terms of what you are uh, scanning and screening so this of course will reduce uh, the yield in total production a judgment will need to be made really about the level of sort of sorting uh, and how you justify that in relation to the return that you'll get in expected sale of the wine. So you can't just sort till, you know, you've got a few berries left. You need to think a bit more commercially than that. The grapes for inexpensive and more high volume wines may not be sorted at all. And that's because of the cost, of course, and the machinery. So you may actually tend to avoid that. The key drivers really here, though, are for the health of the grapes, upon arrival at the winery and then the quality of the wine to be made in relation to the price and what be, can be gained for the wine of course. Types of sorting then we're going to go through here and we're going to talk about three main areas here for your types of sorting. First of all just at the harvesting stage removing unwanted grapes and or bunches before picking or during hand harvesting as you'll see being displayed in this picture that's one form of sorting another form of course now comes into the winery and this is sorting by hand on a table or a moving vibrating belt type machine where it kind of moves it around and then the uh, humans will pick them out by hand uh, now, the other matter here is what we call material other than grapes, leaves, vineyard detritus, insects, sometimes stems, of course, if we are not looking at those. So material other than grapes is what we are eliminating or looking to eliminate at this point. Now, this can take place before or after destemming, or occasionally both before and after. And finally, of course, looking at a bit of modern technology, which takes away the romance, but of course, 
it's modernity and this is happening. So optical sorting is what we're talking about here, which is really a high cost, high tech option of grapes coming in using digital imaging and software technology to scan, of course, individual grapes as they trundle through this expensive machine. The machine scans a hundred grape sample chosen by the grape grower as a point of reference. The full load of gro grapes will then be sorted and then are passed through the machine. And then that optical sorter will start to reject individual grapes that do not conform to the sample uh, test set by the winemaker. This can either be done uh, really with grapes that are coming from machine harvesting um, or uh, at reception in the winery. It depends on where you do this. Uh, this option, of course, is really, really for very high value grapes because it's an expensive bit of kit uh, and it's often only done for top wines. For example, things like Grand Cru wines in Burgundy and Grand Cru Classes in Bordeaux. OK, so that brings me to the conclusion of this section on grape reception. Uh, part one is complete. Part two, we'll be looking at destemming and crushing. So to, do uh, join me for that. I do hope you're finding these videos very useful. If you do have any comments or questions or concerns, remember you can get in touch here as this video is available on YouTube by the comments section below. Please make sure you press subscribe too because you want to get our weekly updates with all of our videos. But you can do so also uh, in touch with us with social media or direct at www.winewithjimmy.com. I've been Jimmy Smith. If you do find yourself in the United Kingdom, you know what's coming. Please come and see me. You can come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you. Thank you.